Mathematical properties. These are properties that you've learned numerous times before. They're properties that are true for whole numbers. But what's the coolest thing about math is that something you learn that's true about whole numbers is also true about integers, rational numbers, and variables. And so we're going to take it one step further, review what you know about whole numbers, and then see it apply to rational numbers and variables. The commutative property of addition and the commutative property of multiplication. The commutative property of addition says you can change the add-ins and you don't change the sum. The commutative property of multiplication says change the order of the factors and you don't change the product. 6 plus 2 is the same as 2 plus 6. When you were in elementary school, your teacher probably had you change it to 6 plus 2 so you could count up, knowing that those were the same. Now we're looking at it with variables. 9 plus a plus 4 is the same as 9 plus 4 plus a. And because these two numbers are beside each other, I can now say that this expression is the same as 13 plus a. I just changed the order of the add-ins but this sum will be the same. Changing the order of the factors, which means it's a multiplication problem because the numbers in a multiplication problem are called factors. 7 times 8 is the same as 8 times 7. 3 times g times 4, I can change the order to 3 times 4 times g, which is the same as 12 times g. That 12 times g is 12 G. Notice here that subtraction and division do not commute. So the associative property of addition and multiplication. The associative property allows you to change the groupings. So commutative we've changed the order, associative we're changing the groups. Perhaps if I was solving 8 plus 5 plus 20, the parentheses say solve there first. But 25 plus 8 isn't something I could do mentally. But if I change the groups, 8 plus 5 plus 20 is the same as 13 plus 20, which changes to 33. Easier to do. So what if we have it with variables? Well. 2 plus f is not something I can solve because I don't know the value of f. But I can change the groups to do 16 plus 2 plus f, which then equals 18 plus f. This is called simplifying an expression. Here's a multiplication example. 9 times 10 times 3. Maybe I don't want to do 30 times 9. But 9 times 10 times 3, changing the group, is 90 times 3, which is 270. So here is a multiplication expression. And remember, there are numerous ways to write multiplication. So because the 3 is beside the parentheses, it means multiply. Because the 2 is right beside the f, it means multiply. So in order to use the associative property, we're going to change the groups which means I'm going to put the parentheses around the 3 and the 2. Please notice that I put a multiplication sign in there because putting two numbers beside each other does not mean multiply. It means 32. So 3 times 2 times f would be 6 times f, which is 6f. How about the identity property? The identity property of addition and multiplication, the identity is something that doesn't change. So I can add 0 to n and it stays n. Or I can multiply n by 1 and it stays n. And this is what it looks like simplifying an expression. 3 plus f plus 0 is the same as 3 plus f. And g plus 4 times 1 well, 4 times 1 is 4, so this is the same as 4 plus g, or g plus 4. This threw the commutative property in because I changed the orders of the add-ins. So, let's use 
what we learned to evaluate numerical expressions, which means find the value of this. And then we're going to simplify algebraic expressions, which means write them with as little letters and numbers as you can, even though you don't can't solve them. 34 plus 47 plus 16. If I were to use my make a 10 rule, I would see that this 4 and this 6 could easily make a 10. So I would rewrite this problem as 34 plus 16 plus 47. And now this becomes something I can do mentally because this and this make a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus 47 is 97. So I used the commutative property to change the order so I could do it mentally. How about this one? 5 times 13 times 2. Again, I could use the commutative property to say 5 times 2 times 13. I'm going to change the order and do 5 times 2 is 10 times 13 is 130. So each of those I use the commutative property to change the order to get the answer mentally. Now let's use one of these properties that we've learned, associative, identity, or commutative, to change these so that they can be something we can simplify. On this one, if I changed the groupings, which means that I could do 3 plus 4 plus C, then this would be 7 plus C. I have simplified the expression by using the associative property. 9 times z times 0. Well, the 0 property of multiplication tells us that anything times 0 is 0. So this simplified is 0. Because it doesn't matter what z would be, the answer would still be 0. Multiplying this times 0. 4 times g times 9. If I use the commutative property, I can change the order to do 4 times 9 times g. 36 times g. And remember that 36 times g can be written 36g. This is the commutative property because I changed the order. And then finally, 3 times z times 1. Well, let's try the commutative property to make it say 3 times 1 times z. 3 times 1 is 3, and then times z is z. 3z. All right, how do I keep all of these properties straight in my head? write these in this creative way to help you keep the definition straight. A big C and a big O in the word commutative helps us remember that this is the property we can change the order. So the CO means change order in the word commutative. Here is associative property and if you think of the T as an addition sign it's okay whether you group the IVE or whether you group the front of the word. So the associative property equals the associative property even if you change the groups. So write the word associative and add some grouping marks. And then finally, this is an ID card. And once you have an ID card, it's not something that changes. So your identity never changes. And you can see here in red it says times one and in black, it says plus zero. I turned it into a person so it would look more like an ID card. So maybe you want to push pause and figure these, write these in your journal, and then we'll push pause one more time and solve the problems on the next slide. All right, now use your notes to fill these in and you identify the property that allows you to solve them. All right, 
name the property and fill in the missing number. 325 plus something is the same thing as 975 plus 325. Well, I can see that the only thing they did here was change the order. So my blank is 975, and the property is the commutative property because they changed the order of the add-ins. 17 times 5 times 2 is the same thing as 17 times 5 times 2. And the only thing they changed was the parentheses, so that means this is the associative property because it's the one with the groupings. All right, now we're going to simplify the expression and name the property. So let's change the parentheses on 9 plus 2 plus C. Let's move the parentheses from here to here. And remember that 9 plus 2 is 11 plus C. So I've simplified the expression, and the property is the associative property. All right, 13 times F times 5. I want to rewrite as 13 times 5 times F. So 13 times 5 is 65 times F. And that is the commutative property, because I didn't have groups, I just simply changed the order of the factors. 16 times z times 1. A couple things you could do here. You could remember that anything times 1 is itself, and so it is 16z, which is the identity property. But, what if you changed it to 16 times 1, times z. Well, that's the commutative property, and you're allowed to do that, and 16 times 1 is 16, and 16z is the answer. So you could have called this the identity property along with the commutative property, or just simply the identity property.